In my last video, I decided to give Assassin's Creed Valhalla another chance after I grew to hate it over the hundred plus hours it took me to beat it. Spoiler alert, it still sucks. But if you want to see the video, I'll have it linked in the description box below the like button. And the response to that video has been great, but one particular comment stood out to me because it seemed like an interesting idea. And that was this one. Basically, give Witcher 3 the same treatment. Go back, try it again, and see if you still feel the same way that you felt back then. Of course, I made a big critique of The Witcher 3 back in the day that's done way better than I could have possibly imagined it would have done back when I made that video. I mean, when I made that video, I think I had like five to 10,000 subs. Like this was a brand new channel. We were just starting out. I could never have imagined that it would be received the way that it has. So now, many years later and having, I think, improved in my craft, I figured it could be interesting if we went back Gave it a look-see and see if The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is actually as good as at least I remember. Make sure to drop a like if you enjoy the video and subscribe for new content. We've got the big critique for Elden Ring, Dying Light 2, Horizon Forbidden West. All of those are on their way currently in the editing process. So if you want to see those, subscribe and ring the bell. But with that, let's get into it. Let's jump into it. So, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We're now on version 1.32. I have all of the DLC and I've played the ever-living crap out of this game. So I figured we should start from the beginning. We're not gonna actually go through the entire game, but I figured it should be good to like try it and see what the game is like from the start now. I don't remember if I said it in the critique, but one of my newer thoughts that I have is that Death March is the way to go. I think. If you're going to play this game, you should play it on Death March. It forces you to use all of the potions, all the abilities. You really get to know the game way better than you could possibly learn it when you're playing on lower difficulties. I highly recommend you play on Death March if you play it at all. Tutorials will turn those off. I'm all too familiar. Simulate, no, because we're probably not going to get that far for this opening sequence. Oh, yes, the uh, the opening cutscene. I remember seeing this for the first time and just being blown away by how cool it looked like of course it's a rendered cinematic this isn't in game or anything like that but when i first saw this i was like i want to get to know this world this place is cool it also always struck me as odd just how different Geralt looks in these cinematics versus how he looks in the game i wonder if like oh and that's so gross oh it's it's so go oh it's so good okay I mean, anyway i i just always wondered if like Geralt was originally designed to look a little bit different when they made this cinematic you see how he's he's got a much sharper brow his features are a lot sharper just in general and then they changed it as development went on i'm not sure but it always struck me as very distinct and then we open up in care oh yes Yes, this shot became legendary. I had this little gif of him moving his legs apart in the bathtub. I had that as like the notification on my stream for, I think it was subs for like two years. It it, it was, I, I, I love this, this whole thing. It's so weird looking back on it now, like she sends a lobster in to pinch his butt or something, but it, like it's weird, but it, it's so iconic at this point. Uh, the booty pick. I, I remember seeing this for the first time. And I was just blown away. I was like, okay, we're off to the races. Like, butts are out, naked in the bathtub. Like, we're just going for it. Smoochy smooch. Yeah, take it in, Geralt, you perv. Okay, I remember this. We grab the key, we go over to the door, we unlock the door, we open it, we run down. But first, of course, we've got to take in the sights on the balcony. This is just part of what we do. Shit. Mountain pass is beautiful as ever. No kidding. I remember the first time I saw this as well when I first played the game and I was just blown away. I mean, nowadays, of course, we have like Unreal Engine 5 and we have some amazing looking games, but... For the time especially, which it's crazy to think, this is like seven-ish years old. Uh, yeah, almost exactly seven years old. This was groundbreaking. It, it really was gorgeous. And for an open world RPG, you just don't get graphical fidelity quite like this. 
Ah, uh, yes, Papa Vesemir passed out in the chair. She was fast asleep. Ciri's disappeared somewhere, of course. I will say, it always struck me that Ciri doesn't really look like her older self. Younger, like, I don't know, her bone structure is just a little different. She always looked very just off in these early sequences. Oh yes, then this pre-rendered cutscene. I remember it looking really, really good at the time, but now it's like, it's kind of pixelated. I don't know if it's like 720p or something, but uh, it definitely looks a lot blurrier than I remember it looking. Siri, get down here. She don't care. A little she devil. Whenever a game transitions like this into a pre-rendered cutscene, though, you know something's about to go down because they felt it important enough to render it separately with higher fidelity, which usually means something big and bad is going to happen. Oh, yeah, so this, this with the, the dummy, the training dummy, he looks over, sees it's bleeding, and he rips it down, and it shows an eye. I did a ton of research trying to figure out what this is supposed to be, and I never figured it out. If you know what or who this is supposed to be, let me know. I figured it was like a dream realm. Maybe it was envisioning Triss or Yennefer or anything, but the eye color doesn't match either of them. It looks like a feminine face. I, I don't know who or what this is supposed to be, what it is supposed to mean in the dream. I, don't, I just don't know. But if you ever figured it out, let me know. Because in the commentary and the critique, I've mentioned it, and I, I could never figure it out. I mean, it's a pretty badass introduction to the villain. Like, you gotta give it to him there. That That's pretty badass. And then we wake up. We wake up. Now, in this sequence, you can talk to Vesemir and walk through the dream. And it's the game's way of actually giving you the chance to explore the dream from Geralt's perspective because he's talking to somebody about it since you can't just read Geralt's mind. I remember thinking that was really, really cool, and I still think it is. It's not done very often in games, um, but it's done really, really well in The Witcher 3. And here we get the combat, the first real combat encounter. On Death March, it's tough, but I mean, again, it just kind of forces you to learn to play the game in the proper way. Like, there's no shortcuts. There's no spamming dodge rolls or attacks. You just got to figure it out. And these starting ghouls, I mean, it's not like they're particularly difficult. Oh, I didn't even see you. It's way more responsive than I remember, too. Maybe it's because my old PC was kind of sluggish and struggled, but this is way tighter than I remember it being. I mean, it's almost like it's aged better, or it's better than I remember the combat being. That, that I mean, that's kind of funny. I wouldn't have expected that. I'll be honest, like, I was kind of braced for it feeling overly dull or or bloated because most people's complaints about the witcher 3 are about the combat specifically they're about the uh the difficulty and weapon durability systems and everything and i remember bringing that up in the critique way back when like five plus years ago but i actually think death march fixes a lot of those problems i had and i wish i had played through the game and the DLC from start to finish with that turned on to begin with. Because I think it would have really helped the experience. I mean, normally with these critiques, I try to play games on the normal setting because I want to critique it from the perspective of most players, right? Like most players are going to play the game on the normal setting because that's what the developers recommend. So fast, really. But in this case, I think Death March really does make the game a lot better. I, I really can't recommend it enough. Ah, oh, yes, the first exposure to the Griffin. This thing's badass, man. Like, 
I know I just am coming off of as like a fanboy, and I get that. But how is this not awesome? <laughs> like this is freaking cool. Ooh. It's just it's just so cool. He takes the whole freaking horse with him. This is mine. And as he flutters, the blood gushes out of the dead animal. Like those little touches, man, that's that's attention to detail. You got to give him credit oh, for that. that was close. OK, so right here, he just asked us for a reward. And this is where you got to start role playing, because witchers, of course, are known for being extremely direct, almost completely emotionless and that's a lot of because of the mutations and everything but one of the results of that is that even if they help like a pregnant mother in distress they're known for asking for coin and a reward because that's their services require payment right they're very um aggressive with that i suppose and so here you're faced with the first option of saying you don't owe us anything for saving your life or you can say we can use a few crowns the choice does have a consequence and uh, it's the first time that we really get the chance to role play. And already, like, you just got to take this in. I, I get it. We're playing this in 2022. I've got a PC that's cranking all of the graphical options to the absolute max. But with games that aren't built well and aren't beautiful to begin with, that doesn't get you anywhere. This game is just freaking gorgeous, even today. Like... We're, we're allegedly getting a next gen upgrade at some point. I believe they delayed it to next year, which sucks, but allegedly we're getting a next gen upgrade, which will have like ray tracing and all sorts of stuff. The game already looks tremendous. I mean, look at the water, look at the bloom effects, the God rays, like it's freaking impressive already. I can only imagine what a next gen upgrade is going to look like. Like, good God. But okay, that's the opening sequence. I want to see what the late game is like, specifically the DLC and a lot of those sections. Okay, so here we are loaded into a late game save I have on PC. And this version of Geralt is a little different. We're level 48. We've got some really high level stuff. So in this case, I've got the Teshem Mutna Steel Sword, which I got tons of comments on this in all of the videos I ever do on The Witcher because I use the same footage. I have it all stored on a NAS that I have down there. You can't really see it, but I've got a server where I store all of my footage from all of my runs of pretty much every single game that I play, like 50 plus terabytes of storage down there. And so I reuse the footage from my previous runs whenever I talk about a game. And so when people have commented and been like, what the hell sword are you using? It looks badass and it regens and restores vitality when you kill enemies. This is that sword. So for all of you who've been asking for like five years, this is the sword. This is like, look it up, Google it, figure out where I got it. I don't remember at this point, but it's freaking awesome. And uh, people have been wanting it for a long time you also notice that my horse seems to be smoking uh uh if if you picked up on that that is actually from uh it's like a rot that that basically the devil gave me there's also flies flying around it if you can see those um what it is is when you do the hearts of stone dlc if you help gontaro dim at the very end you can actually choose a gift from him. I don't know why. Okay, so that's a that's one weird thing that we're seeing. The the health bar or the level bar is flickering and freaking out a little. I've never seen that before in my life, but it's it's doing it. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, so one thing that hasn't aged well, the level bar. I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. But basically what you can do is you can select a couple different gifts that he will give you. One of the things is like immense riches where he gives you like 2,500 gold or something like that. I don't remember all of the specific gifts that he gives you, but one of them is this saddle called the Caparison of Lament. The saddle appears to be fashioned of strange leather, the hide of some unknown beast. As evidence of its unusual nature, sacrifice it to say that it is always rather warm to the touch. Um, or suffice it, sacrifice it. Jesus, I, okay. I need another drink. 
Suffice it to say that it is always rather warm to the touch. The saddle addles the mind of a randomly selected opponent within a limited range. It gives a uh, 100 stamina and addles the mind, apparently. So it's just a cool little thing that you can get if you allow Gontro Dim to take the soul of uh, Olgird von Emmerich. I believe. It's been a while since I played through it, but I'm pretty sure that's the name. It, it stuck with me all this time. And uh, so it, it gives you great stamina for your horse, and it also inflicts basically a stagger effect when you ride up on a group of enemies, which is useful. I mean, I would be scared if I rode up uh, or if somebody rode up to me and their horse is like steaming with black smoke. That would be a little unsettling, so it makes sense. Another thing I have to comment on from the original critique, for those of you, you know, the million plus people who have watched it. In that video, I have a bunch of footage of my swords and armor being broken. I got lots of comments on that. And it's funny because when I was recording that footage way back in the day, I remember being like, I need to test how badly you can break weapons and how much of an impact that has on gameplay and this and that. And so I had all of this footage collected where I was doing just that. And I used it in sections where I wasn't talking about weapon durability or anything else. So it looked like I was just randomly exploring and playing through the game with really broken equipment. And everybody's like, dude, like everything's broken. Take care of that. What, what are you what are you doing? And I just never clarified it. I mean, again, it's one of those things that now looking back, I can appreciate and understand that that was a mistake in editing and I should have fixed that and I should have used other footage. But when you're just starting out on YouTube, and especially when you don't expect a video to be viewed by a lot of people, Let's go. you kind of overlook those things and you don't take those things as seriously. So you just throw the video together. And uh, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, I've learned from. And you won't see that kind of mistake made in a current critique that I put together. But it, it kind of gives those old videos a little bit of personality all of those crappy editing mistakes that i made all over the place so one thing we have to do is we have to go and check out a high level area and see if we can fight an enemy and see what combat or monster hunts are like with a high level character such as this so this treasure cache is guarded by a monster Let's go, uh, let's go check it out. All right, I gotta find travel post. That is something I don't like. I probably made excuses for it back in the day. I don't think this is a good thing. Like I'd much rather craft a traveling kit like in Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden West where it takes resources and uh, then you can craft that fast travel pack and use it to travel quickly across the map. That is a much better fix for me than just having these arbitrary fence posts in the world that you have to run up to to fast travel. I don't get why you need those posts to travel. Like, I don't I don't see what the reason is in the game's narrative or in the gameplay itself. Maybe it's just meant so that you can't just fast travel willy-nilly anywhere you are. They want you to explore the world more, so they make you go to these posts specifically. Maybe that's what it is. I'm fine if like you have to fast travel to a fast travel point that you discover, but I don't know why you'd have to go to the post to travel to another post, if that makes sense. Okay, let's fast travel over there. We're gonna go to Toussaint from the Blood and Wine DLC. We're gonna go over here, fast travel. Oh, I love Toussaint so much. And we're gonna see what beast is guarding this treasure. And if this character loadout I have is actually strong enough to take him on. Let's do it. Oh, I think I remember this one. These, I believe, are going to be like really weird centipede looking plant monsters, if that makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's what is guarding this, if I recall correctly. Did I already defeat the monster is that why I remember it and I just didn't collect the treasure I think so <laughs> I think I already killed the monster I just didn't get the treasure I just ran through here killed the thing and then moved on 
Huh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess that makes sense. It's fun to kill monsters. Uh, it's funny that that was like years ago and I just never collected it, but whatever, whatever. Let's find another one. Okay, we're gonna go all the way up here. I don't have a discovery marker on that. So I am gonna run up there and uh, let's actually ride Roach all the way. It's amazing how good the muscle memory is. Like I played this game so much on so many different systems. I've bought Faster. something insane, like eight plus copies of this game over the years. Uh, not just for myself, but like also to share with friends and, and family. But like I own it on the Switch, the PC, PS4, Xbox One. Um, I think I just use the built-in upgrades for the, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So I don't think I rebought it there, but I bought a couple copies for friends. I bought another copy on my wife Nikki's PlayStation account so that she could play through it because she recently tried it for the first time. Like I've played this game so much and it always amazes me when you play a game a lot and you can still remember the weird eccentric controls like double tapping the left stick to call Roach. I, I If you had asked me what the button prompt is to call Roach, I probably couldn't have told you, but I remembered in my muscle memory, I mean my horse, double tap that. It's so cool to me. I, I know that's probably not what you clicked on the video to hear, but like that, I just find that particular thing kind of cool. This is the same house where uh, that lady who's obsessed with spoons is. Let's take on these guys, the Foglets. And uh, she was actually possessed by Gunter Odim. She made a deal with the devil. Ooh. And let's also use Yurden because these guys are spiritual. There you are. There's that stagger. Ooh, that slice animation. That, I mean, that's badass. It like cut that damn thing in half. I remember that looking slick back in the day, but geez, that was smooth. Oh my God. God, that was sexy. Okay, okay, let's let's move on. Sorry, Mr. Foglet. <laughs> that was, ooh, that was gory. Uh, uh, that was good. So the overarching point of this video was to reevaluate all of this and see if The Witcher 3 really is as good as I remember it being. And I will be honest, every part of this experience makes me want to play it again, makes me want to play it more, it's the opposite of what happened with that Assassin's Creed Valhalla attempt at replaying it that we did in the last video where I played that for five minutes and I was immediately like, oh, I remember why I hated this. Yeah, the, every part of this sucks. But this, I'm immediately pulled back into it. It really is a testament to just how well it's put together, how well everything is optimized. Like, it's just, oh, what a game. I don't need... When. Look at that stamina, dude. Who do you think you're messing with? Is that damage build up? The refill to vitality that we get? And we're going to get a good ass kick. That's okay. There's the little parry. Whacked himself on the wall. Oh, okay, I screwed up that timing. Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure what that was, but that was weird. That, that was, I like dove uh, above them and across them. I remember the ragdolls being a little weird in this one, specifically when Geralt dies. Like, his weight drops to zero, and he just ends up soaring across the way. I, I remember that being a thing. Okay, let's go all the way up here as far as we can, and we're going to ride our horsey horse up here because I think something interesting will be found there. But I, I just want to try finding a monster of some sort. But it's going to be a little tough because I did go through and like specifically hunt down monsters when I played this last. I do remember doing that. So I don't know how many monsters there will be to uh, to be found, but... Um, I mean, that right there is a bear. 
I don't remember this guy. Let's do it. He's wearing like a little, a little vest. So this guy probably is an actual dude that uh, has some sort of spell on him. A little, little fire, little fire action. So you see that damage build up, and then he dies, and I get a vitality refill. Let's see what he had on him. Honeycomb jar of honey. Is that just supposed to be Pooh Bear? Is that like their homage to Pooh Bear? If it, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. I think that's their homage to Pooh Bear. Now that I look at it. He's got all the jars of honey. He's in an actual, like, whatever you call this, that the term for a beekeeper farm, like a bee farm. I, I don't know. Is there an actual name for it? I don't know. But he's wearing the little red sweater vest. I think that was Pooh Bear. I think I just murdered Pooh Bear. I feel vaguely bad. But like I was saying, every part of this makes me just want to go back and play it again. And I've actually pondered sort of doing a 2.0 on the critiques and remaking them but in my my current style and with my current production values and I would think evolved opinions and thoughts on all of this especially because my blood and wine video I I sprinted through it I was in the middle of I believe finals for school and I just did not put very much effort into it and uh I've never been happy with it. And so I've always wanted to go back and do it again. And I was waiting for the next gen update to do it, but I don't think we're going to get that anytime soon. So let me know in the comment section if you uh if you would like to see me go through these games again and try it another time, you know? Let let me know if you would watch that and I would uh I will happily put that together. Yeah, this thing. The great thing about Toussaint as an area is that it's got so many different bosses and, and enemies that are just totally different from the base game. Like that thing. That's so weird, but awesome. I love it. One of the other things this little experiment makes me wonder, just looking at the big expanse and, and huge map that we're dealing with, like we can go to that camp, like that castle way off in the distance. We can go there. We can explore that. It makes me wonder what a true next generation Witcher game looks like. Do they give us a, a map the size of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but with this quality? If they can do that, I'm down. Like if they can give us an entire country to explore, that's a dream come true. The problem is just when a game like Valhalla does it, but it's built on a faulty premise and foundation. But with the gameplay quality and systems we're dealing with in The Witcher 3, I think all that I really want is more. Like there are a couple small tweaks here and there um, that I think could be made to improve the game's quality, but all told, it's really, really solid across the board. Oh, yeah, look at all this. So this place is guarded and uh, is their center of operations. And it's just an army of bandits. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't think I I don't think I ever came here back in the day. That This is crazy. At least I don't remember coming here. One of the other things I love about Death March difficulty is that it makes it much more grounded where like this encounter and engagement doesn't make sense for me to take on right now, at least not without really preparing and thinking about my approach. Because when you're playing this on a more a lower level, let's say I was playing this at maybe um, the normal difficulty, this would be a walk in the park because I'm level 48. Those enemies are level 40. I'm going to smack them around. It's going to be easy. But even on Death March at level 48, it's going to be much more difficult and I stand a chance of getting killed if I'm not careful just like Geralt would stand a chance of being killed taking on a fleet of bandits in their own territory with dogs and all of their defenses set up so it makes it much easier to become immersed in the world and to fall in love with it and have a respect for it and I, I would say that's probably my biggest takeaway that I've I've 
come to over the last five years or so since I made the critique and since I played the game for the first time way back when. My major takeaway is that playing a game like this on a higher difficulty can actually lead to a much better experience at the end of the day. So there we are. We've experimented with it and I am left pretty damn impressed. But let's huddle up. Let's talk about it. After giving it another chance and playing through it for most of this afternoon, I've got to say, I am more than impressed with how well this thing has aged. I, I was a little worried when we started this that I would hop back in and be like, oh, so many things about this are clunky and weird and off, and I, I don't think it's aged well, and my opinions changed and all that. It's actually aged really, really well. And all I want to do is go back through it after spending this little amount of time with it. And my guess is that a lot of you, after watching this, are thinking maybe I should go back and play through it again because it's scratching all of those nostalgic vibes and itches that you have. And that's where I'm at. So like I said, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. That lets me know you want to see more stuff like this where we go back and try old games and see if they hold up. And of course, if you wanted to watch sort of a critique 2.0, let me know that in the comment section below so that I know that's worth pursuing and actually doing because all I'm looking for is an excuse to play this again because I actually, I'm enjoying it and I think I could lose myself in it once again. But thanks for watching. I love you all very, very much. Head over to the Twitch channel, which I'll have linked in the link tree in the description box below the like button. Head over there, say hi to us. We're probably live at this very moment playing games and hanging out. I would love to see you. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I love you all more than you could possibly know. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.